Okay, so a couple more ways I can change how we end up looking at an energy profile. Um, one of those ways is when you see a dotted line like this one on the graph. What that dotted line does is it presents a new pathway that the reaction could follow. So we still start at the same place, we still end at the same place, but rather than having to go all the way to the top, instead I can just go to the dotted line and follow through. That happens when we have a catalyst. So you may have learned in previous science class, catalyzed, sorry, it's a catalyzed reaction, um, that a catalyst makes reactions go faster. That is true. But the reason why it makes reactions go faster is because it lowers ultimately the activation energy. You'll see you don't have to put in as much energy to get to the activated complex. It lowers the activated and the activation energy and therefore um, more of the molecules in the reaction are going to have enough energy sooner to react. Um, so when I see that dotted line, anytime they ask about something catalyzed, that means I would want to be looking at the pathway that includes the dotted line rather than the one that goes all the way to the top. Sometimes that'll affect my answers and sometimes it won't. So for instance, if I ask you the relative heat of the reactants, my reactants are still at the start of the graph. In this case, they have a value of 25. The catalyst didn't affect that. The catalyst doesn't change our reactants or our products. I didn't ask you the relative heat of the products, but if I did ask you the relative heat of the products, it would be 100. Um, again, catalyst doesn't affect that. When I ask you the relative heat of the activated complex, if I don't say catalyzed, I mean not catalyzed. So part B here is ignoring that catalyst. We know to find the activated complex. I'm always looking at the topmost point. And so that has a value of 150. However, when I'm looking at the activated complex catalyzed, now that's when I'm looking here instead. That's my topmost point of a catalyzed reaction. And so that would have a value of 130. When I go to find the heat of reaction catalyzed, Treat those two parts of the question separately for a second. Heat of reaction. Ignore the catalyst. How do we find heat of reaction? We do products minus reactants. Our products and our reactants are both not affected by the catalyst. So it doesn't matter that they said catalyzed. I'm going to look at my graph. I'm going to look for my product value, which was 100. I'm going to look for my reactant value which was 25. And subtracting the two, 100 minus 25 gets me a delta H, sorry, gets me a delta H of 75. And that's a positive value. So this would be, if I had asked, this would be endothermic, which also looking at the graph visually makes sense because you can see we went up overall in the graph. So this would be endothermic. Again, the catalyst there didn't affect anything. And if I just ask myself how to find heat of reaction, I should be able to realize that. Where it will affect something is the activation energy. Because activation energy, we do top minus the start. Those are my informal words for it. But in a catalyzed reaction, my top is at 130, not at 150. So I need to use the 130. And then I can subtract out the 25. So it does actually lower the activation energy in a catalyzed reaction. This is a smaller value. I get, let's see, I get 105. I would have gotten a larger value if we had used 150 minus 25. So the catalyst does lower the activation energy. The answer is here and here. Okay. The only other thing I can do to change how you look at this graph is ask you a question that has the word reverse in it. So the forward reaction is when we start on the left-hand side of the graph, we go up, we go down, we end wherever we end. Reactants are where I currently have orange, products are where I currently have green. When it says reverse, do not reverse your formulas. Don't reverse the fact that we do products minus reactants. Don't reverse the fact that we do top minus start. Leave those things as they are. When it says reverse, what I want you to think of is that we're actually starting over where I just circled purple. When it's reverse, those are our reactants or our starting point. 
and where it is here, I'll circle now in purple, those are our products. So when I do heat of reaction, I'm still doing products minus reactants, but because it's reverse, my products are 25 and my reactants are 100 and I get negative 75. It does so happen, you reverse the heat of reaction, it's gonna be the same number, but a different sign, because the change in this graph is constant. It's just a matter of which direction, are we going up and then down? Like, are we ending higher or lower than we started? However, with activation energy, it's not gonna be the same number at all. Activation energy, we always do top minus start, I didn't say catalyzed, so my top in this case would be 150. And my start though, because it's a reverse reaction, I'd be starting on the right-hand side, so that would be 100. And I would see an activation energy of 50 for the reverse reaction. 